Welcome to the French Riviera, a sunny place for shady people, as Somerset Maugham once wrote. And he should know, he lived just over there in sunny Cap Ferrat. Now, joining me to talk about the Monaco Grand Prix is Scott Mitchell. Uh, Scott, the Monaco Grand Prix, is it the jewel in the crown of Formula One still, or is it an anachronism that needs to change or go? Well, it's still, it's still a special race, uh, not just because we have practice on a Thursday instead of a Friday. That would be a pretty lame reason to say it's the jewel in the crown. But it's there's obviously the glitz and, and the glamour. There's uh, there's nowhere really we film these videos where we have uh, a backdrop quite like this one. Uh, that's special, and it you know it brings the it brings the stars out, doesn't it? It's a being in Monaco with the with all of the the super yachts and the celebrities and everything. There there is something special about this race, but all the while other Grand Prix are starting to step things up. There's a celebrity, there's multiple celebrities at pretty much every race now. Uh, there's more effort being made to make races stand out, put make it a bigger show, concerts and, and things like that. And it's becoming harder for Monaco to stand out, in my opinion. You can't just rely on the fact that it's been around forever. You can't just rely on the fact that it's a street race because it's not the only street race in town anymore. I, it, it feels like it needs something to move with the times uh, effectively i know you're you're more well versed in monaco's uh, history yeah. uh, than i am uh, i was hoping to uh, recuse myself from this discussion because the uh, author of the uh, soon to be award winning book the life monaco grand prix but uh, sadly i can't now I, th I suppose the thing with monaco is that unlike many races it's more of a treat for the spectator at the track than the <coughs> spectator on tv because for the tv audience you have a processional race for the people at the track you actually have that that massive and really close-up view of Formula One drivers doing what they do best. I suppose the question is, you know, are the cars too fast or too powerful now, or has it kind of just been like that ever since Caracciola was in his pomp in the 1920s, and it's just big cars going around tiny streets? Well, there's definitely a disconnect between what you get if you're in Monaco and then what you get when you're at home, and that's not just because it's fancy and pretty and you feel like you're special or whatever, you're a better class of people just because you happen to be there. It's nothing to do with that. It's that experience of seeing cars up close. If you're lucky enough to uh, be uh, near the tunnel, for example, you, know, you can hear it on TV how, how amazing. I know everyone moans about what the cars sound like these days, but it's still a phenomenal sound. And feel, you feel it reverberate through you. It's, it's amazing. It is something special. And I'm sure for the drivers as well, there's very few places like it on the calendar. The the challenge of threading one of these cars that are so big, as you say, and so fast and powerful through the streets, it's not easy. So that is that is phenomenal. And as a as a challenge, it probably is unique. It, it has something that maybe other races don't. But as I say, I just feel like it needs to be brought into the 21st century a little bit. I like that there's practice on Thursday, not Friday, because you've got that day off. So the drivers rely on FP3 to get back into the rhythm. But 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 why why make it so conventional? If this is going to be the jewel in the crown, my personal suggestion would be that the qualifying changes here put an emphasis on the fact that this is such a big challenge. Make it one shot qualifying. Put uh, put that emphasis on the drivers to go out, get it right, reward the drivers that can go to the limit and not step over the line reward them more than you, than you are at the moment maybe switch it up so it's in instead of the group group phase that we have now not only is it one shot it's reverse championship order so the the championship leaders go out first when the tracks its greenest and 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 the challenge is there you're not going to suddenly put a Williams Robert Kubica and George Russell aren't suddenly going to be fighting for first and second but maybe you'll mix up the front the the front of the grid maybe the midfield you'll have someone suddenly leap into points contention something like that something that just lifts this Grand Prix with all of its heritage, with all of the glamour that goes along with it, just lifts it above the average race. There's 21 races in a season. I don't see the harm in, in making one stand out a little bit more. I suppose we're all used to watching reality TV nowadays, which has added peril, and that sort of one-shot qualifying, much as it was maligned back in the day, does bring that added dose of peril. I suppose the, the main difficulty is selling it to the teams because there will always be someone who is disadvantaged. I mean, maybe if there's less running, there'll be less track evolution through the session. But otherwise, how would you then determine who runs when apart? from reverse championship order and you then get the most powerful teams in the sport the people with the biggest voices making the, the biggest noise that it's unfair but the, this is part of a, a more fundamental f1 problem that i've 
I take issue with, which is these are meant to be competitors. They're not meant to be the rule makers. You, you establish a set of regulations and the teams either sign up and come and play or they don't. And so you do draw the line somewhere where you say, this is what we want. We think this is going to be better for the show. It's going to be better for the people trackside. What a show you're going to get trackside in Monaco if Lewis Hamilton goes out on a green circuit and has one lap to make or break his Monaco Grand Prix. That's going to be amazing. Likewise, on when you're watching from home, you're not going to know how the session's going to turn out. You might have a slightly topsy-turvy order for the race on Sunday. That would be pretty mega. But but why stop there? If, if that's not going to work, think about something else that might. Maybe make it so that there's a minimum mandatory number of pit stops that you have to make. Pirelli brings loads of tyres to every Grand Prix, but do we always work through every single mm. set of tyres? Do those tyres get carried over to the following race weekend? Is it is it not a waste? Is is there an inefficiency there? Like, and by introducing extra pit stops, would you stop having one of those horrible races like last year and the year before, where everything just turns into this horrible race of pace management, just because you know that you're not going to get overtaken if you stay on track? So it's about driving. I mean, I think it was Alain Prost said you win at the slowest speed possible, but Monaco sometimes, especially in this era of, of tyre sensitivity, you you take that maxim to yeah. a new extreme and it's embarrassing almost to, to a degree. So so yeah. why not come up with ways to, to fix that? F1 is, uh, there are so many things about F1 that make it artificial. So to trying to do something to mix it up is just adding one more artificial component to the mix. And it's sport, it's entertainment as much as it is anything else. And it, yeah. when the cars are as big and powerful as they are at the moment, when the drivers are as competent as they are at the moment, Monaco's never going to have that element of unpredictability unless it rains. I was going to ask you about the tyre situation because are, are, are there too big a difference between the tyre compounds, do we think? Or are there, is there not enough difference? Because as you said, last year we had that ridiculous scenario where everyone went on the softest possible tyre compound. The tyre compound that they had been screaming out for from the beginning of the season, from even the Spanish testing, they were saying, come on, give us those ultra soft, the mega soft, the giga softs, and, and, and let us see what we can do with them. We gave them those tyres in Monaco and they just toddled around as slowly as you like. I think the problem is that from the driver's point of view, they claim that it's not necessarily how much any given tyre offers in terms of grip. It's the fact that you can't then lean on it for the duration of a stint or that you slide around too much when you're behind someone else and the tyre starts to overheat. So is there a way for Pirelli to address that? I don't know whether it's through choice, whether it's a lack of technology or understanding or whatever, but fix that problem effectively and you'll have drivers pushing harder obviously whether that that makes any difference at a place like monaco remains to be seen because um you could have you could have someone on maybe one two three steps of compound softer here and would you actually still be able to overtake is there anywhere where you'd be able to really make that count i'm just not convinced with the way f1 works at the moment that, that you would unless there's a big pace offset and you know that's another argument uh, mm. for the for reverse grids as well. If you wanted to in introduce or trial a reverse grid race, maybe you could reverse reverse part or all of the grids in in Monaco. I know that you wouldn't necessarily want to see a slow car or the slowest car win a race just by the fact that it's a reverse grid race in Monaco. But if you put Lewis Hamilton on the back row and the Williams on the front row this weekend, would the Williams still beat? Lewis, I, I don't think they would. Yeah, you're on the verge of committing sacrilege there, I think. Uh, very often, when you when you solve a perceived problem, you're just actually kicking something further down the line. Is there anything else that you think that Formula 1 could change about Monaco that would improve the spectacle? Or are we kind of stuck with this tighter layout? I think Lewis Hamilton, last year or the year before, said they're building more streets, they're reclaiming land from the sea. Maybe we could extend the circuit. You could maybe mix that up. I don't, don't really know how viable that sort of thing is, but why not why not make it so that it feels more of a showpiece? If you can't change anything to do with the format of the circuit itself, make the weekend a little bit more special. I know that you have, uh, I know that you have F2, which is always amazing. We've had Formula Renault here before. We've sort of mixed up what the support races are. Why not get Formula E here? Formula E was here what, two weeks ago. That ha it has that rotating slot with the Monaco historic to, mm. to use the circuit once every two years. Why not have Formula E on the same weekend as Formula One? Formula E could use the, the, the smaller Formula E circuit. Formula One uses the full circuit. How special would that be? The absolute pinnacle of traditional motorsport and the pinnacle of, of the future new technology and whatnot running together. Why not trial that for the first time in Monaco? Do you think Formula E would actually prefer to use the full circuit, though? They've been kind of crying out from that ever since Gen 1, and maybe when we get through to the next generation, it might even be possible. Yeah, there was 
there was all talk about it being the full circuit this year and then ultimately that got that got overruled. So the desire is there to, to use the full circuit. The problem is, especially if you put it on the same weekend as F1, it would inevitably draw comparisons between F1 and FE, which the organisers at Formula E and, and even the FIA, they don't want because there is, it's not a, there's not a comparison to be made there. Yes, you can always, uh, you know, compare lap times, put them side by side, say, oh, why isn't this much faster? But it defeats the purpose of that championship. So maybe that would go slightly too far if you put them both on the Grand Prix circuit, but it could still work. I mean, what, but why not? And, and again, Monaco is meant to be the this, this special place. It's a place where both circuits race at. It's a, it's a circuit that, and a race that for both championship means a lot to the person that wins. Why not combine them? Yeah. There have been Grand Prix in Monaco in an almost unbroken string since the 1920s. She's missed the wartime years and the early 1950s. Should Formula One now abandon Monaco entirely as an impractical race? There's an argument for it on, as you say, in, in practicality terms. If you say, well, this is never going to be a good motor race and unless it rains, are you putting tradition over sporting value? Does it actually offer something from a sporting in a sporting context I think it still does because it is that unique challenge from a driver's point of view we would just like to see something that just helps turn it into that blue ribboned event that it's meant it's meant to be the other thing about uh, getting rid of it it's we know that this has been a, a race with um, shall we say favorable uh, it's, it, it's got it curries favor doesn't it in the f1 community in terms of uh, what the teams can sell gets a cheap it gets it's one of the only races on the calendar or it's been the only race on the calendar that doesn't have to pay to to be there in this new era of liberty media can they really afford to have a race on the calendar that's not paying so i'm sure there's all sorts of reasons to consider monaco's future personally i think it, it should stay on the calendar i just i just think it should be mixed up well thank you scott let us know what you think below the line unless your opinion is bring back refueling, in which case, no, that's never going to happen.